Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Um, just a quick video this time um, to in introduce or kind of flesh out a little bit the concept of um, amphiprotic substances. Okay, so we've been talking about the lowry bronsted theory of acids and bases. Okay, so we've gone over some definitions, some examples of reactions, proton transfer reactions. We introduced the idea of conjugate acid-base pairs, and we looked at that um, in a bit more detail in the previous video. And in this video now, we're going to be um, recapping this idea of what it means for something to be amphiprotic. Okay, so that what we're going to do, just to kind of refresh our memory, is we're going to look at this ion. Okay, so it's technically known as the hydrogen carbonate ion. Um, more uh, generally known, uh, kind of more, you know, in an old-fashioned kind of name, but something that I would tend to refer to it a little bit and also, um, yeah, a bit more commonly, as bicarbonate. Okay, so we're going to look at two examples, or look at this as an example, and then we're going to follow it up with another one. So what we see is that depending on what we combine the hydrogen carbonate ion with, that we can get it reacting two ways. So the first thing is, let's say we combine it with something that's a strong acid, an acid, which has this H3O plus hydronium ion. Okay, so what we're going to get, we're going to get, um, in this case, that we're going to get it gaining or accepting a proton from our hydronium to form this substance, which is um, carbonic acid. Hopefully that would be a little bit more familiar to you by this point um, when we looked at carbon dioxide equilibrium. Okay, so carbon dioxide, uh, carbonic acid and water. Okay, so in this situation that it's acting as a lowry bronsted base. Okay, it's accepted a proton in order to undergo reaction. However, if we place um, this bicarbonate ion in the presence of um, something that's basic, then what it does is that it's going to actually donate its proton to it. It's going to therefore acting as a lowry bronsted acid. And so what we end up forming, we've taken away a hydrogen with a positive charge, so it, it goes down from minus 1 to minus 2 to form the carbonate ion, and we've also formed water again. Okay, So in this situation, so that it can act as either a Lowry Bronsted acid when we put it with base, or as base when we put it with acid, we get two different, um, react, uh, sorry, two different products, so it's not doing the same reaction, uh, but it is able to, do, to react in either fashion. Okay, so we would say that it is amphiprotic. Okay, remember that amphi equals both or either. We used that we used it when we were thinking about this term amphoteric um, and protic relating to being to relating to protons. Okay, so something being amphiprotic is an example of a substance that is amphoteric. Okay, I realize that those two words are very very similar and that you you may well get them confused. So try to tease out the difference there. But so an amphiprotic substance is a, is a specific example, a specific situation of a substance which is amphoteric that is able to act as both an acid or a base. In this case, it's acting as both an acid and a base by transferring a proton to something else. Okay, so it's not all amphoteric kind of substances would react this way. So just keep that in mind um, for as much as you might care. But now let's have a, another look at, at one last example and then just wrap it up. Okay, so we're going to look at the di what's an ion that's called the dihydrogen phosphate ion, which is H2PO4 minus. Okay, it's one of the examples given on your sheet. Okay, so we can treat this the same way. We can say, all right, well, imagine if we react it with acid, and imagine if we react it with base, and see what we see. Okay. So we know that hydronium's got one extra proton that it's going to donate. So we're going to go from H2 to H3, and we're going to go from 1 minus to neutral. This is phosphoric acid, if you hopefully that rings a bell. And we've made water as well. Okay, in this situation, it's acting as an acid. It's donating one of its protons to the hydroxide ion. Um, so we're taking, we're, we're adding another negative charge. So it's HPO4 and it's 2 minus, so this is known as the hydrogen phosphate ion, uh, sometimes known as orthophosphate, um, again in an old-fashioned way, and water. 
So what we've done in this, this particular example, that we've, ident we've used chemical equations to show how this particular ion is able to act as either an acid or a base. Okay, because if this kind of a question, if it gets touched on in the exam, um, you're, you're going to tend to need to, to be able to demonstrate that or to be able to identify how this is happening based on the chemical equation, being able to, sh to show how it can either accept or donate protons depending on what we combine it with. And using H3O plus and OH minus are our classic kind of um, ways that we can represent this clearly and simply in a, in when, if you're asked to in the exam. Okay, so you can go on and complete the rest of the practice exercises. That's all for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.